having an artist in residence is totally mind blowing because Mike takes the rules, the same rules that everybody knows for Kirigami, just like everybody knows the rules for chess, and he then turns them into something that's so much bigger and so much more intricate than what we could possibly have imagined. So we make some rules, <coughs> axioms of how things fold and how things connect, and then he makes structures that we would not even have conceived of. You know, what I've been able to bring here is you know, I'm an outside perspective. I don't have a science background, but I do have a serious interest in this sort of structural properties, I guess, uh, more so than um, the aesthetics. You know, I like the mechanics of them. But the kirigami we do here is different. It's, uh, it's based on crystal lattices. So it's very exact geometry, but easy to use. You know, we're cutting, folding, and then reattaching things. So we're actually changing uh, the curvature of a sheet. You know, these kirigami structures can fold further, I guess. And so you have these mechanisms uh, that you couldn't really get uh, from other materials or other techniques. My research is heavily focused on what the sets of rules are of how you take things that have defects, things where floors are missing or rows of paper are missing, and how those things glue back together and make the final structure. So the kirigami is just one aspect of the same process that I use when I study liquid crystals or actual crystals and how these different kinds of defects or, you know, faults, stacking faults, how they interact with each other and finally make structures in the end. You know, Randy's a physicist, so he doesn't necessarily think in terms of applications, uh, but we also work with an engineering group. They're material scientists and engineers, so they know what we could do with a structure like that because they know whether it can be produced or not. So a lot of these designs, you know, they work in paper if you're using tape and taking the time to fold them, but to have them self-assemble on like a nano or micro scale requires uh, a lot of different processes than you know, they would at, at a more real world scale. It's really meant to be like a, a sort of general scalable process that you can apply to things that may not have been feasible before.